Hi, my name is Mr. Lindbergh. Today in our comfort series, we are discussing the topic of shame. Unfortunately, shame is much harder to describe in its essence than it is in the way it plays out in our relationships and in our experiences. Shame, if I had to define it with a characteristic, shame is hiding. Shame wants to encourage you to hide and to run because you are not loved, you are not worth it, despite what anyone says about you. Shame is this thing that says, if anyone finds out, I'm nothing. And fortunately for the enemy, this is the place that we are most vulnerable to lies, to accusation, and to temptation. When we have shame in our life, There's a great foothold for evil. Unfortunately, just because one experiences shame doesn't mean it's something that they've done. Although it could be. Someone could do something poor and, sh and like the guilt of that could lead them to shame. But for others, like myself, uh, shame is something that I've been living with for over two, uh, over two decades. When I was three years old, I was sexually assaulted. And um, not just the situation in that moment, but just the way it was never dealt with. Shame led me to a place where hiding was literally all I ever knew. And so the me, the me that I thought that I knew was really just a facade. It was a way that I have coped. It was a way I masked my failures, my deficiencies, my weaknesses, because at the end of the day, I was only as good as what I could produce. I was only as good as what other people said about me. But when people are your security, what security do you really have? When the basis of our love is on the things that we can do, the things that we have, or the ways in which other people see us, we will soon realize that our handle of security is or like grasping for straws. You see, the web of shame that soon engulfs you doesn't just leave you as an innocent bystander who just hides, right? Like, shame, when, when we feel as though we are threatened of being found out, shame responds with aggression towards self, towards others, because no one can find out what's really under there. Because if they knew, they would leave. If they knew, we wouldn't be loved. And this isn't, this isn't new for us. This isn't new for humanity. In Genesis 3, chapter 8, this is uh, referring to Adam and Eve after they had fall, after the fall. And they heard the sound of Yahweh God walking in the garden in the cool of day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahweh God among the trees of the garden. But Yahweh God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Shame makes us so irrational to the point that we ourselves hide from God. And that's scary stuff because when, when we hide from God, who are we exposed to? As we all know, there's a sneaky little snake in the, in the garden. And it was the, it was, he was the one whispering to Adam and Eve. Made him disbelieve the word of the Lord. Made him trust that they really knew what was good all along. But as soon as they bit the fruit, their eyes were open and they were naked and they were scared. So what was it that led Adam to hide? Or better yet, what is it that leads us to hide? As we continue to reflect on Genesis 3, the moment that we see shame into the picture is when we see Adam hiding from his own nakedness because of deception. But then again, you see God's response to that. God responds in love to, towards Adam and his wife. God responds in justice towards Adam and his wife because he curses the snake. 
But more than that, God shows his love in a tangible way by binding them in their nakedness. He meets them right where they are. And that is the promise of the gospel, that we are met right where we are in Jesus. And so what's really cool is that um, the Lord has been using Psalm 32 as a way of helping me find freedom from this shame. Psalm 32 and Psalm 51 are actually kind of flip, flip sides of the same coin. Um, but let me just read. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man whom the Lord counts no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of, su of summer. When we are in shame, when we are trying to live as though the facade that we want people to see is our actual reality, we are dying on the inside. We are naked and we don't even know it. We have no energy. Our bodies are hurting. But here's the thing, David says this, but then I acknowledge my sin to you and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of, this, of my sin. Guys, what I'm telling you today is, is that when we are exposed in our nakedness, Yahweh comes and he clothes us. When we have nothing before us that's worth anything, or when we have lies that's running through our minds that tell us that, we come to the Lord and we allow him to be the hiding place for us. We don't need to be the ones who hide because we cannot, we just simply cannot. We will just continue to spiral ourselves into this deeper and deeper into the shame web. But when we confess our sin as David is teaching us, when we confess our sin, when we confess the ways that we have failed to, to love God rightly, when we confess the ways that we have just misunderstood the world, like he is not angry. He's going to clothe us when we are naked. He rushes to us in those moments to pick us up and to love us exactly as we are, where we are, for who we are, because we are his children. We are his children. And it's the truth that we are his children. That's, that's the truth that destroys and dispels any shame that remains within us. We can come and as, as David literally says, with shouts of deliverance, he will surround us because he is our hiding place. Psalm 51 says, hide your face from my sin and cover my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your spirit from me, but restore to me the joy of your salvation. And this is, it's in these moments, it's in these moments when, the, when he is binding us and clothing us with love, with grace, with strength to endure and to keep us safe. The Lord loves us. And what's so cool is that despite how disgusting of a snake that shame can be, when we allow the Lord to be our hiding place and not these made up versions of ourselves, we can truly find freedom and forgiveness. So wherever it is that we currently find ourselves, whether it be in our hiding or in our attempt to present a false version of ourselves, we're never really lost. Jesus is with us and we are completely covered by his blood. And it's all because of his liberating love.